ready? Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. All right, okay. All right, man, ready? Yep. All right, man. Yo, what's good? All right, hold on. Let me turn my other one. Yo, what's good, man? It's your boy, Derek Branch here at StriceSelfSports.com. Today's episode, episode 31 of Strike Self Sports Podcast. We got another special guest with us today, and he's, he's here to, to talk about the NBA and some content that he put out that I would just like to get him to elaborate a little bit more on. Um, <laughs> it's an interesting article. I had to go back and read it and just, you know, like, man, I need to get this guy on the podcast, give him a little talk a little more about it. Um, young man, I met him. Well, not met him, but he approached me online, liked to contribute to the site, set him up with an account, and he's just been knocking it out of the park ever since. Uh, University of Memphis journalism school student, uh, writes for um, Strike 7 Sports, been doing a great job with the columns, um, writing about University of uh, Memphis basketball, even though, you know, folks may not agree with it. May not agree with our our uh, takes. It's it's still it's growing. It's, it's still it's benefiting us anyway in the long run. Uh, Rights about the NFL, NBA, uh, World Cup soccer, the Euros. You got a lot of pieces on the Euros. I like to welcome Brian Beta to the show. What's up, man? Uh, Mister, I'm blessed to be part of your podcast. Uh, I was thankful for you giving me the opportunity to showcase my fighting talents on your website. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Um, what's been going on lately, man? Um, you know, uh, if, if you don't know about it, um, if, you, if you don't know, anybody don't know, the NBA uh, training camp starts in two weeks. So just like that, it snuck up on us again. And what's been going on, I said this before in the previous pod, is that with the, the pandemic and the way the, the leagues have been sped up, speeded up now, to get them over with, it's just that the news is just running together now. You have breaking news with the NBA, NFL. Some days it's like all in one day. It's just Twitter just, you know, overblow, just explode with news. And it's been happening a lot. And the latest news out of the NBA well, a few weeks ago was that Ben Simmons is uh, requesting a trade. Well, I don't think he has not formally requested a trade yet, but he's saying that uh, he would like to, he's not going to attend training camp, pretty much remove them from his social media, uh, cutting off all um, contact, and the trade, he wants to, uh, he may want to get traded. So, that's an article, that's a comment that Brian put up on uh, the Strike Seven Sports uh, website. You go ahead and check that out at StrikeSevenSports.com, just click on the NBA tab, and the comments right there. And I just want to talk about a particular team that he's inquiring that they should, be, you know, get involved with training for Ben Simmons, and that's the Memphis Grizzlies. And the Grizzlies were able to get over the hump, get into the playoffs. They uh, Last year we saw them training upwards. Um, pandemic uh, shut things down for a little bit, but they were able to get back into it. Got in the play-in game, didn't advance. We lost a uh, red out Portland team at the time. Came back, regrouped, pretty much the same squad, and they made the postseason. They beat Golden State in the uh, playing tournament. Got in. Uh, looked like they were gonna do something against the Utah Jazz. Got up on one game to zero, but. Felter and lost series, but they've made a lot of moves lately, and I'm going to go through a couple of them right now. Um, you got to basically they they they, they, uh, they were able to trade for um, Stephen Adams in return for um, and give the Pelicans Jonas Valanciunas. They're able to get Patrick Beverly along with um, let's see here. Georgia Dean, they got uh, Eric Blesso as well for that trade from the Pelicans. But they eventually shipped off uh, Bledso and um, Rondo. You know, Rondo's going to be Rondo, and um, they uh, agreed to waive him, and now he's with the Lakers. Uh, Patrick Beverly, I believe, is with the uh, Timberwolves. And the only person they really kept from that deal is Ray John, is um, Stephen Adams. 
So I got a quote here from the article that you wrote, Strike Seven Sports, and it's I'm going to start up and read it. The Memphis Grizzlies are a small market team, and every small market team, small market that wins a championship, has to take risks. Trade for a player like Ben Simmons would be huge risk because he may have peaked, but it, w- it would be worth it because he has to be special. So, um, I like to ask you, with the growth of the Grizzlies right now, I like like to ask you, do you think a trade for Ben Simmons would disrupt disrupt the cohesion of this team, given what that what has been built right now? Not really, but you would. He's still developing, if you really think about it. And this team still hasn't, like, I don't think they have their core yet. Uh, yeah. They have not, but the jury's still out on Jaron Jackson. But ben, right. you could say, worst case scenario, I believe Ben Simmons could be the second best player on a championship team. If he gets a jump shot, he could be the best player on a championship team. And if you think about it, he's the best player. If they traded for him right now, that they could get. A lot of people like Zach Levine, but he may stay in Chicago. Bradley Beal, you may trade for him, but he may leave the next year. So I would just try to get a guy who's available right now, like Ben Simmons. He has all the tools that it takes to be a really, really good NBA player. He just has to put it together. And I feel like having a guy like Ja would help him because Ja's a dog, and Ja wants to win. And I think having the right uh, people around you can make a big difference. So do you don't think that uh, this would be too much for head coach Taylor Jenkins to handle? I think he can handle it. He probably could look at it, um, this situation being like, because he was in Milwaukee when Giannis was developing. So he could look at it the same way. And I think he could work wonders. Uh, he's a really good coach. They've done a great job uh, in developing players. And I think uh, – if he got the challenge of Ben Simmons, it would be a very difficult challenge. But I think Taylor yeah. could do it. And if he can't do it, they could find a coach that that. I'm not worried about so you think, that. So you think they could fire the coach like they usually do, man? No, I don't think they can fire the coach. But until yeah, – because he's overachieved. So they, they won't fire Yeah, yeah. He has. Yeah. Yeah, they um, – to me, the Grizzlies have overachieved big time. The, the rebuild took shorter than ever than I thought it was going to be. Um, it really growing them fast. They really got the uh, John John Moran the second pick in the draft, and he has a lot of conversations now that maybe the Pelicans should have went for John Moran instead of Zion Williamson. Has been there. These two guys are going to be. I think as long as they stay, stay healthy and continue to um, perform at the, at the high level. They're going to be intertwined with each other as, you know, which player is having the um, the better career and bringing around a better organization. But what? You going to say something? Yeah, I, I, I was waiting for you. I didn't, I didn't have anything to say. Uh, yeah, I'm just saying that. Go ahead. Well, the one thing I may add, uh, I don't think it's fair to compare John uh, and Zion because I think in that draft, Zion, like, if a G, if Zion ended up becoming a great player and a GM passed on that passed on him, he would have been fired. So you almost had to take Zion. The thing is, yeah. Shock rose up the boards after one really good year, and he uh, is a really really good player. But I think that was the right fit for Memphis. Uh, I don't I don't think it's fair to say the Pelicans should have maybe taken Jod just maybe based off what we've seen so far. I think the Pelicans made the right decision. Now now they have to do about a job building a better roster and uh, give him a coach for more than one year, that would help too, and then take it from there. Yeah. Um, another thing I wanted to point out, man, is you're right. The small market teams do have to take risks, but it has to be the right risk because unlike um, these big markets like uh, L.A., Chicago, um, Boston, where they have these, they have these uh, billion-dollar deals with, networks and have resources, loads of money. They can go into they want to, if they wanted they could go into the luxury tax and pay the overpay for players. And if it messes up, it messes up. You know, they can just, you know, rebuild quickly. So you just like the Lakers did with uh with, with before LeBron got there, what what were the Lakers doing? But they 
got really good really fast once they got LeBron and um, AD and all these other resources. So I think if another thing I look at is if the, if the, if, uh, the Grizzlies decide to do this and it doesn't work out, it could, it could, it could hurt it could cripple the franchise, man. They don't have Grizzlies, Pelicans. But they they got to make the right moves, man. When it comes to you know, you know, spending on um on high end talent like Ben Simmons, um guys bringing in guys like Chris Paul and all this other stuff, they got it got to be the right thing, man. It got to be it has to be the right move, man. So I just think it's something to think about with uh the Grizzlies. I don't know if they will do it. I think they had like the the young core they have right now, but it depends on how serious are they about. Contending for a championship going forward, or they, you know, they really they serious, but now they want to take another step, and then after next season, go for next another um, another like a key piece, or during the trade deadline, guess, hey, man, we can go for this guy that we can think he can put us over the hump. Your thoughts? Yeah, the only thing they got to make a move. Uh, they didn't make it, they made some marginal moves this summer, but next summer they got to make a big move. Because they're fixing a paid job, they may pay Jerry, and then <clears throat> they're going to run out of options, uh, or they won't have a lot of money to spend, and they're not really a free agent destination. So they really got to make their moves via trade or via draft, and they've already drafted a nice little core. So now the next move is to make a big trade. But yeah, you're right; it has to be the right one. If they can somehow find, preferably, if you can get a wing. Because to win in today's NBA, every the teams that I won have always had an elite wing. So that's the number one priority. And they've tried to do that with the Justice Winslow trade, with the Jarrett Culver trade. Those may not turn out to be what they ultimately hope, but at least they're trying to make moves. Uh, but the thing with Ben Simmons, I feel like he has a lot of potential. He just maybe just needs a fresh start. It needs to be the right place, but I think uh, Memphis could be that. Uh, and it's just you got to make moves, in my opinion. The right moves are there, but you got to take risks because if you don't, you don't ever want to be that franchise that wishes, what if we did make the move? You want to be right. like, oh, if we made it, it may not work out fine, but at least we made the move. Right, that's true. All right, so um, it makes a uh, segue to the next topic. Let's go about the uh, Grizzlies. So, you guys traded uh, Jonas Valanciunas. Jonas? Valanciunas for exchange for Stephen Adams, and I don't know. I was just observing online on uh, you know social media, uh, debate shows, uh, NBA um, Network, and there's kind of like a mixed reaction to this move. And I think Valanciunas averaged like 17 points a game while he's with the Grizzlies this season, this past season. Uh, big man that could score, uh, move. In, a, in the paint, get guys involved. I'd like to ask you: Do you think it was a um, upgrade or downgrade by going for bringing in Stephen Adams and losing some scoring with um, John Morant? Because uh, not John Morant with uh, Valanciunas. Because when um, Adams was with the Pelicans, it just didn't fit with Zion. He's a great, a good player, uh, great leader on the court, off the court. Fit in with the teammates and all that, but it just, it just never on the court. It just never materialized anything because it just didn't fit. He just never fit with um with Zion Williamson. So I'd like to ask you if you think it's an upgrade by moving on from Valanciunas and bringing in Adams. Yeah, I think I don't think it's an upgrade, but you ha- if you got to look at the whole trade, the main reason right. why so they said so they can move up and select Zion Williams. So if, to me. The trade will really be dependent on if Zyre, how good Zaire Williams ends up becoming. Because if he ends up becoming a star, like he has a lot of potential to become that, then it was worth it. Because the, pe- the thing people got to realize with Jonas Valanciunas, is he was going to be a free agent, and the Grizzlies would have had to overpay him. Um, giving him extension would have been the wrong move because he's just not a part of their future. He's a nice part of their present. Play, really, really over-exceeded expectations. A lot of the players, they, uh, veterans they have, have done that, but it was the right move to move on from him. Uh, Adams, I think, could actually be a better fit with uh, Ja because he's just a pick-and-roll big, much better defender than uh, Jonas, and I think uh, he can really help the team. But the key to that trade is getting Zaire Williams. If he can reach his full 
he has a chance to be special. And he's another one of those wings the grid front office are trying to pursue and trying to see if they he can be what they hope he can be, which is a really, really good player. What people forget, he was a top 10 recruit coming out of high school and some injuries and just, it was just a hard fit at Stanford. But I feel like players like him, when he gets to the NBA, he'll be playing with better players and the game will start to open up for him a little bit more. So you think he'll see some action on the court this uh, season or he'll be more of a um, project in the Fox him to the G League? What do you think about that? That's a really good question. I think he'll get some playing time, but I think he'll be, uh, he'll get like maybe 10, 15 minutes. Uh, I, I could see them sending him to the G League, but th- I feel like they'll give him some playing time. Uh, maybe he'll definitely come off the bench. He's definitely not started. I'll be stunned. Oh, yeah. But yeah, uh, he'll definitely, they'll ease him along, and that'll be the best thing um, for him. Yeah, um, I read about the guy, um, your article on him. Zaire uh, Williams. Um, look forward to seeing how he can um, come in and be a part of his organization. Because if you bring him in, you draft this guy, and he um, he delivers, man. He got another, um, possibly another impact player of your team to go with uh, John Moran. I know the verdict is still out on um, Jaron Jackson as to what has helped. But if you, bring, if you bring this guy in, man, you make a chance that Jerry Jackson may be expendable, you know. So we just got to see how everything goes. And my last question on the uh, the Grizzlies is, um, what are, what are your – what do you think the overall expectations are for the Grizzlies and your expectations as well for the se- upcoming season? Do you think – you still consider them to be a uh, in that playing phase, the playing team phase, or do you think, you think they're going to take that next step and be a um, – Top five, top six seed in the West. With you got um, right now you got Gold State coming back with uh, Splash Brothers with uh, Draymond. You got uh, Phoenix to bring their guys back. You got the Lakers, the um, you know they're, they're the Lakers uh, Clippers with Kawhi. He's resigned. Um, you got uh, uh, never can count out Dame living in Portland despite the, uh, what's going on out there. And um, who else we got in there? What's the other team out there? The Jazz, Utah Jazz, and what do you think is this team's expectation is going to the next season? I think just to try to make the playoff, because like you were just mentioning, the West is loaded. There's so many yeah. really good teams. And again, the people, what people got to understand, the Grizzlies have overachieved the past few years. So the way I look at it is if they make the playoffs, great. If they make it where they're not a playing team, great. But if they miss it, they can end up adding another asset via the draft. So I think at the, at the point in their uh, tenure uh, with this group of guys, I really don't think they, they they lose either way. They win regardless of what happens. So you don't think it would be a disappointment if they've overachieved the last two seasons, right? Yeah. And they don't. They kind of uh, regress. And miss the playoffs, you don't think that would be a disappointment? No, because the West is loaded. Now, I mean, yeah. I mean, I think circumstances do matter. Like, let's say they have, like, a 10, 15-game lead, and then they just blow it like that, then maybe it would be disappointing. But, uh, but, again, the way I look at it is the playoffs is like a bonus right now. I don't think it's a must. If you, you win either way, whether you make it or not, I really feel like they'd be better off missing it, in my opinion. <laughs> Because I'm, I'm I'm guys, they got a hit via the draft, so and they would just have more assets to use. But if they make it, they'll be fine. But the way I look at it, if they make it, they'll be out of the first round. So it all depends. Would you yeah, rather yeah. have a, a lower draft pick or a higher draft pick and uh, get a better player, or get a, a lower draft pick and just lose in the first round? So I mean, it all depends the way you look at it. Yeah. Um... I want to say that the positive come out of uh, the pandemic era of basketball is that now that things are a little sped up, teams, a lot of uh, top-heavy teams, a lot of big-market teams uh, suffer a lot of injuries. And with that you know, being said, you see a lot of other teams in the small market kind of like take advantage of it. And that could happen again, but I'm not sure. But you're right. I mean, if they miss the playoffs, 
fans may not be happy, but they've overachieved the past two seasons, man. Um, like I said, the, the rebuild took shorter than it should, you know, and hopefully they can uh, get, they can keep this thing going, you know. But this is my last question. Um, outside of the Grizzlies, and it's concerning the uh, Los Angeles Lakers, a team that you very knowledgeable about on. Um, back in, uh, what it was like, uh, during the finals, I think it was July, you wrote the column about uh, the Lakers trading for um, Russell Westbrook. <laughs> and, um, you know, we got, you know, we got, uh, you know, a little, I don't want to say clowning, but a lot of people didn't, you know, believe you. And, um, you know, believe the story that we put out that it wouldn't happen and the Lakers didn't have the cap space because they were paying, uh, who they were paying at the time, LeBron and AD and all the other stuff going on and the Lakers, he wouldn't fit. But I believe after the, I think, I think it was after the finals. Yeah, it was after the finals. There you go. Well, the Port Lakers, Russell Westbrook interested in uh, going to the Lakers. It happened. And now the Lakers have made a lot of moves. And you have uh, half of the uh, Banana Bro crew there. You have Carmelo. You got LeBron. You got uh, Russell Westbrook. You got Rondo. You got AD. Who else? You got uh, Ariza. Um, Who else? Help me out. Dwight Howard. Yeah, uh, Dwight Howard. God dang. Malik Mon, Kendrick Nunn. Malik Mon, Kendrick Nunn. You got um, you got it. They let go of... Uh, Aylen Horton Tucker. Yeah, they got him there. They let go of the white kid. Uh, What's his name? Yeah, Steve Caruso. Hey, that was, yeah, because he was... He worked good with LeBron. And, and the guys that play good with LeBron, they don't let go. But they he, he walked. And... This is a very older team. I just gotta ask you, man. Do you think this can this thing can um take off and get to a championship? I'm a little worried. I'm a huge Lakers fan, and I think they did a solid job. I would like to for them to add another wing, as you saw in my James Ennis article that uh, you posted this right. week. Uh, but other than that, if they can put it together, I think trading for Russell Westbrook was the right move. Now, the only thing that could have been better, if Dennis Schroeder was coming back for sure, then I think trading for Buddy Hill would have made more sense because he would have just opened up the floor a whole lot more. But the Lakers were able to address that because they added a lot of shooting. I am worried about the defense because that's been their mantra the past few years, and they're really losing that. But they're going to, in my opinion, be much, much better offensively. I think, ironically, uh, how far they'll go will depend on health and how they're able to play defensively and and how they're able to uh, gel together. Because Russell Westbrook and LeBron James and Anthony Davis, that sounds really good on paper, but actually putting it all together, that's going to be a challenge. And I need to ask you this too. So Chris Paul was available this offseason, this offseason for all free agency, the agency to go free agency, but the Lakers decided to go with Russell Westbrook. Do you think there was ever a point to where LeBron wanted Chris Paul on the team and Chris Paul felt comfortable being in Phoenix, that, given that he was that close to getting to a championship? Yeah. Do you think I, they yeah, I, I agree with you. I think uh, if Chris Paul wanted to come, he would have probably been a Laker because of that LeBron connection. And Chris Paul just is a really, really good player. And I think he's a little bit better than uh, Russell Westbrook. He's just really, really old and has some injury issues. But uh, I think he was always staying at Phoenix. Uh, and the Lakers couldn't pay him what uh, the Suns are play- paying without it him being a sign and trade or something. And I don't think the uh, Suns would like to help the Lakers. Uh, no, so, really. yeah. so I, I didn't see that happening. So they really had either really two options. The way I look at it, uh, Russell Westbrook may not have been the – he's better than Shooter. But the way I look at it, if, what would you rather do, trade for Russell Westbrook or overpay for Dennis Shooter? 
and the answer to me is not really even close. You trade for Russell Westbrook. Did they give up a lot? You could make a case they did, but I think they ended up getting a really good player that for once in LeBron's era and, uh, with the Lakers, they have a group of guys that can shoot it and create for They have a lot of shot creators, and that's going to make LeBron's life a whole lot easier because LeBron's, I think, 37 coming up. So he's going to be yeah. pretty old. So, yeah, it might. <laughs> he can't be doing all that creating for everybody. So having Russell Westbrook there is going to be so important for him. Ronda even coming back just as a veteran. He may not play a lot, but you need those guys in that locker room. And now if they can somehow add James Ennis, I'm not a fan of the DeAndre Jordan signing. I, I'm yeah. Not, yeah, I don't understand, especially if you end up getting rid of Gasol. I would rather, rather have Gasol. Uh, there were some rumors. I don't know if you know who Damian Jones is. He was with the yeah. Lakers. Yeah, I would have liked him back, but the Suns ended up picking up his option. So, um, but it'll be interesting to see. The, the age will be an issue, but if they can just manage the regular season and just focus on chemistry and be healthy going into the playoffs, I think they'll be a tough out. And so, if you ever get in a situation to where they're taking the last shot, who do you, does LeBron defer to Russell or he just goes to AD? That's, you I know, like, I feel like LeBron should, in, the, in, the, in the playoffs, man. I feel like LeBron should take take the shot. Now, if he decides to pass it, or or if someone's like has a really hot night, then you give him give that person the ball. But LeBron should take the best shot because, my opinion, he's still the best player on this team. Uh, is he the most important? That that's debatable, but definitely still the best player. Okay, all right, man. That's it. That's it, man. Um, and one more thing, man. Uh, we got to come out of the West, man. Or I know it's early. I know it's early. We got it, man. Uh, uh, I'll give you. I'll give you a prediction, but I have the right to res- to change my mind before the season starts, or if the season when things may change. Right now, man, that's a tough one. Right now, if I had to choose. I would probably lean towards the Lakers, but it's not. But it's really, really close because the Suns. I, I'm I'm not really sold on them. They they're a good team, but they got everyone as they got lucky. Uh, it, I think it really showed at the finals. Uh, and and I'm not knocking them. Every team needs a little bit of luck, but you could tell they just weren't ready for that moment. Uh, yeah. The Jazz. I just don't think they have the defense to stop the Lakers. Uh man, who uh, Denver? If Jamal Burry was healthy, then maybe I, I would pick them. You just, just don't know when he's going to come back and how long go the season. And so right now, I would give the edge to the Lakers. Now, if the Warriors somehow get Ben Simmons or something like that, maybe that can change my mind. But the Warriors, I still think they're a step below the Lakers. So right now, I'll give the edge to the Lakers, but it's not by a lot because, as we know, the West is, is wide open. And, yeah. I think the teams that have had experience together, that's why I think the Lakers' first few games and first few months will be really, really critical to their season because chemistry is so, so important, especially for an older team because they may not practice a lot. So they have, they'll have to figure out that chemistry. Okay, man. All right, man. That's it, man. That's all I have for, us, for you um, for right now. Um, look, um, Brian, just go ahead and tell us where you can find you on Twitter, man. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. If you type in Brian Adesha Alabata, you should be able to find me. Uh, I'm humbled to be part of this industry, growing slowly. Uh, and I'm glad that you were able to have me on tonight, and hopefully this could be the beginning of many more. All right, man. It's good to have you tonight, man. Uh, you can follow uh, Strike 7 Sports on IG, Instagram, well, IG, Twitter, Facebook. You type in Strike 7 Sports, and it'll pop right up. You can follow us on um, yeah YouTube, same as that, Strike 7 Sports. You listen to this video, this podcast on uh, YouTube, uh, Spreaker, Anchors. Give us a five-star rating. Let us know how you feel about the topics we talk about, any feedback, critique, critiques, anything like that. Also, you can check out Strike7Sports.com for this content on the NFL, the NBA, and much more. Have a blessed day. Peace. We're out. Thanks.